Hey everybody, I'm doing a small little recap of E3. Um, in this video, I'm just going to talk about the games that I'm looking forward to. And the, of course, if you saw the title card, the name of the video is The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. And The Good is basically the games I'm looking forward to. The Bad are the bad games I don't like. And The Ugly is the overall experience of E3. So let's get started with The Good. First game I want to talk about, Cyberpunk 2077. Wow. That already stole the show already. Like Keanu Reeves showing up out of nowhere, talking that he is part of the game and he has a bigger role. And yeah, that pop is from from the excitement. Um, the cool thing about it was, I didn't really mind Keanu Reeves not being in it because it's like I was just want the release date. The release date was already good. Him being in it is a bonus. And that guy who just screamed out, "Your breathtaking!" was the stealer of the show. Because he got a free the $200 bundle just for saying that. But the point is, I can't wait for this game to come out. I can't wait to team up with Keanu Reeves, his character, and see what, what's going to happen. And that's one of the biggest games that stole the show. And the next game I want to transition to, a childhood favorite of mine, was Battletoads. Dude, I'm glad it's coming back. A lot of people are saying they don't like the art style of it. But to be honest, it's great. The comic book lookiness of it fits for it. Because Battletoads was never meant to take it seriously. It, it was a very fun beat em up game. And now you got three player co op and it's coming to the Xbox One. I hope it gets a PC release soon because I am not willing to shell out $300 for a paperweight. And um, talking about another childhood game Doom. Doom Eternal. Wow. Um, I like the combat system. They're sticking what they were good at from the last Doom game. But this time, you don't have to do that much combo, combining guns and everything. They basically, guns go back to the way they were. Just pick up and shoot and upgrade. That's it. No combining what and what, getting OP and etc. And I do love the story in this one. It's basically Doom Guy. He killed too many demons. God said, stop that. And Doom Guy just looks up and goes... He goes, ooh, you're in trouble now. I'm going to send angels after you. And that was really cool. Oh, but there's there's so many games. And I'm just going to talk about the ones I like to buy and see. And the next one is Star Wars, The Jedi, Fallen Order. Really cool. It takes place between the the prequel to the, new, the, the, the old sequel, you know, like New Hope and all that. And you're playing as a Jedi. Somewhat young, ambitious Jedi. That's like low key and everything, kind of like brass, open world, and he's just trying to help he can and try to figure out what it takes to be a Jedi. Um, that's gonna be really cool to play, and story wise, I can't wait to see more story. Gameplay wise, it looks like a regular action adventure, but something with more story is Shenmue Three. I love the fact you are continuing from the last game straight right away. You're in some part of China that martial arts is very rampant and in a good way that you know because in China it was outlawed for a bit now it's everybody's learning it but basically you're in a small village town now it kind of went full circle because if you play the first Shenmue game you're in a small town and you're trying to figure out your father's dad and then when you play part two you're in a larger city of Hong Kong and then after you beat part two the ending shows him riding a little boat and he goes to a small little neighborly village so it kind of went full circle I love it and speaking about small little islands, Link's Awakening for the Switch. Wow. I never thought they were going to do another remake of a remake because there was a remake back in Game Boy Color and it was really great. I loved it. But this one's really cool because I love the art style. I love the fact that it's in the Switch. It's a perfect game for the Switch, to be honest, if you want it on the go. Because for me, Legend of Zelda, Link's Awakening was one of the few Zelda games that got me hooked to play more Zelda. He goes, yeah, I played the Nintendos in the Super Nintendo, but the Game Boy one was the one I really stayed glued for hours and hours, and I'm glad it's coming back. And I love the new feature, the, the Dungeon Maker. That's going to be fun. I'm going to be there for hours. And speaking of, of, of another character with hack and slash abilities, No More Heroes. Never thought that was going to come out. There's no gameplay or anything, but I love the fact you get to play as Travis again and maybe some other characters. Because they showed, they showed in the beginning of the trailer that a guy dressed up in a suit. That's pretty cool. So there might be a, a, a common Rider slash Power Ranger type hero now. But Travis is still in the mix. And it's still chaotic and epically crazy. And speaking 
and of course we're in the theme of heroes now, I want to talk about Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 for the Switch. I love it. I've always been a big fan of the Marvel Ultimate Alliance series because you get to play two-player co-op. It's over over the head camera, playing with heroes and saving the Earth. This time it's a four-player experience. They're throwing in other characters. They're throwing in characters that I grew up with, like Marvel Knights, X-Men, and um, other Mar and then um, the Fantastic Four are coming back. That that was amazing. Oh, but there and the other th game I'm really interested is back back to 1985. If you're a big fan of Silent Hill games, like I mean Silent Hill one, back to 1995 has that feel. Like it has that PlayStation one graphics, but the eeriness, the the the, the, the feeling that discomfort and just all out dark experience. It's really great. And these are the games I'm looking forward to that I want to purchase off the bat and pre-order and everything. I just can't wait. I'm glad that E3 was a little different this year because Sony was never involved. Nintendo does its normal direct. The only conferences were Square Enix, Ubisoft, Bethesda, um, Xbox, that's it. So it wasn't that big this year. But it's fine by me because I'd rather know the games more than the conference. Because now the bad. Let's talk about the number one game everybody is super hyped for, excited for, is Final Fantasy VII, the remake. I am not going to get it. And you're talking to a guy who's the biggest Final Fantasy fan ever. And you could see why, how big of a fan I am. And, um, yeah, I'm not getting it because they're using the Final Fantasy 15 engine. It's, so it's going to be an action action RPG, and I'm kind of sick of that. I wanted Final Fantasy VII to be a turn-based RPG again. I do like the graphics. I do like the way it looks. It's, it's fun and everything. But the fighting mechanic is boring because it's all hack and slash, and if you do their thing called... There's a, there's a special mode, but it's basically slow-mo mode. And it gives you a chance to do tactical. And they took another thing from Final Fantasy XV that you could switch between characters. You already could do that in Final Fantasy XV. And so there'll be moments that you have to play as Barret to shoot from far distance, clap to to attack with a sword, and Tifa to do or punches and kicks. So and here's the thing, because it's Final Fantasy VII, it utilized the materia as magic or whatever. Every character could have used whatever they want. I don't know how that's going to work now because we're using the Final Fantasy 15 engine and the 15 engine, you don't really get to sign magic to certain characters. Yeah. Well, so my outside source just told me that they, you can put material on everyone. So okay, that's kind of cool, but still it's like, like, I got problems with when it comes to remakes from Square Enix because they promise it for one system and then when they're, like, way behind or they're waiting for the next big thing to use, they will just launch it later. And that reminds me a lot about Kingdom Hearts 3. Because in Kingdom Hearts 3, they did that. It was supposed to come out on PS3, but they're like, no, PS4 is coming, so we're going to do it on PS4. So they did that. And the thing is, this game's going to be episodic, ep uh, you know, episodes throughout the few months at a time kind of like your games like life is strange and you no know, the walking dead stuff like that so a game back in playstation one that was four discs that complete the whole story now it's going to be 30 dollars a disc if you didn't buy the season pass and to me that's like why it's not that great it's like you're getting more money and yeah it's not going to do it for me. And another remake that's being made is Final Fantasy 7. Not 7, 8. And all they're doing for 8 is they got shafted. Because I feel bad for 8. Because I'm a fan of 8 as well. Not that big of a fan like 7. But 8 is still pretty cool. All they did was they boost up the graphics, the sound. the every, They just basically boost everything up to look like a PS2 game. And you could have done that yourself on a PC. Just like 7. You could have done 7 yourself on a PC. And the game I'm going to talk about... Dirty Money Laundering, that's what I like to call this co company, is um, from Gearbox Borderlands 3. Never been a big fan of it because all I have to say is the original people who did it and the guy, 
that ran off with the money and is actually still running on the law on tax evasion. Um, is I don't really support a company that steals money and makes a profit out of stealing money. It's it's kind of messed up because it's like you you ask me to make like you want me to fix a door, but I use that money you gave me to fix my own door and I give you a crappy door on purpose. And that's what they did. So I'm not a big fan of Borderlands 3. And there's nothing new about Borderlands 3. It's the same gameplay. The same graphic style. The same artwork. They haven't really done anything. Like, if they want to continue the story, that's fine. That's cool. I don't have problems with that. Just promise to deliver more and don't use stolen money. That's all I ask from Gearbox. And speaking about the same thing and the same graphics just being ported over everywhere is Elder Scrolls Blades for the Switch because... That version is the same version they use for the cell phones for the Switch. And they haven't done anything new. Yeah, there's more maps. There's more cosmetic things. But it's the same thing on the cell phone that the, the Switch is going to get. And talking about another Bethesda game that that we have to keep talking about it. It's already dead and people don't want to talk about it. It's Fallout 76. They said they're adding a new game mode. And the new game mode is the lamest game mode ever. They're adding Battle Royale. That's it. That's all they're doing is adding a Battle Royale to Fallout 76. A game that no one really wants to play. And people who are still playing it... Wow. I'm surprised. And um, next... Uh, this was supposed to be a childhood game. But... But they kind of ruined it now. It's Commander and Keen. It was an old DOS game, and they're bringing it back on a cell phone. A cell phone game, of all things. And if you see the Bavista live stream conference, you see a lot of people's faces cringe when they hear that. Because Commander Keen is actually related to the main character from Wolfenstein and Doom, if you follow the lore. And I was like, really? You could have made an action adventure game. You could have made a platformer game. Heck, you could have done just a generic first person shooter for him. But no. Cell phone game. Have fun. Yeah. I want to relive my childhood on a freaking cell phone. Thanks. And speaking about online play, and not, not really speaking about online play, but Fantasy Star Online 2, Xbox One exclusive. That is. Ugh, cringy. Because. That game has been out for for a while now, on the PlayStation 4 in Japan, and they're like, no, we're, Microsoft's like, no, we're gonna buy that, and it's gonna be ours, and we're gonna use it in our our system only. It's not gonna be shared, and that pissed off a lot of fans. And on the subject of pissing off other fans is Resident Evil 5 and 6 being ported to the Switch. The two games that sucked ass in the Resident Evil franchise. And on the Switch, of no less. That's not going to make them money. That's going to be... That's just going to take up space at GameStop. Um, and those were the bads of the games. And now I want to talk to you about the ugliness of E3. And when I say the ugliest, I mean the overall experience of why I didn't really like E3 this year. When I was sitting down watching the the coverage of all the games, PC through PC through Ubisoft and all them, they had a running theme going on, and I'm sick of this theme because this theme has been going on last year and the year before that and the year before that. Generic army games with zombies in it, or zombies with generic army games, or zombies or army games. Stop it. Get some help. But seriously, stop. Like, no more. And there is actually other Battle Royale games coming out, too. With their own quirks and kinks and everything. But still, more Battle Royale games. And the number one thing... Sorry, I had to look away because I thought I heard something. But the number one thing that really got me a little worried now about the gaming industry is streaming services for games now because it's becoming a trend because it wasn't popular right now until it started picking up speed playstation now was really the the grasping point of it but now xbox is doing it 
Ubisoft is doing it. The, there's a Google machine that does it now. So we're basically getting to the point that we're not even going to buy games anymore. We're just going to stream it. And it's not going to be great because if you don't have a good enough internet or if you're, or your or your provider cannot provide the speed you need, it's just going to slow the game down. It's not going to load right. It's and etc. And if what happens if the, their service is down? If you bought the service and if it's down, you're going to be not be able to play your game like maybe a day or a week or something. That's kind of messed up. I'd rather stick to my... F two, two formats um, I'd rather stick with. Physical copy or digital. Like, I wasn't a big fan of digital, but now I am because, think about it, you need the space, you need the room. Digital's okay now. But I still prefer my old school physical copies. But streaming services. So that is my experience of E3. The good, the bad, and the ugly. I know some of you guys are going are gonna to complain about Final Fantasy VII. And to be honest, I don't care. It's a garbage game. I'm not gonna buy it, <laughs> cause I'm I'm done with garbage games from Square Enix, um, and of course Cyberpunk 2077. Come on, Keanu Reeves, breathtaking. That is definitely the game that's gonna win Game of the Year when it comes out. And um, that's basically it. I hope you guys have fun at E3, and I'll see you around.